It's common knowledge by this point on the channel that a Core i7 is the best solution for content creators, but you don't need something like a 6950X or even a 5930K or any other CPU compatible with the X99 chipset. All you truly need if you plan on editing and rendering in 1080p and even 4K is a Core i7-6700K. Now that's not to say that these other processors won't do well, they'll do much better in fact than the 6700K, but if you ask me, the 6700K is the best bang for the buck content creation CPU out there. But what about gaming? Should those who only ever game on their computers consider a Core i7? I suppose we could boil this question down to, does hyperthreading really make that much of a difference with modern AAA titles? It would only make sense in this regard to compare the 6700K to the 6600K, essentially a Core i7 without hyperthreading and slightly less cash. So let's tackle the question then, Core i7 for gaming, yes or no? To answer this question, we'll be running through the classic gaming benchmark routine using my own personal rig. It's packing 16GB of Gil Superloose DDR4 clocked to 3000MHz, a single GTX 1070 from ASUS running at stock, and a Captain 240EX AIO cooler from Deepcool to ensure that both of these chips stayed nice and cool when under load. Both the 6600K and 6700K will be overclocked to 4.4GHz at one3 volts, so this is a frequency that almost everyone should be able to obtain with both of these chips and a decent cooler. I will also be running all of these tests at a resolution of 2560 by 1440 since any higher would unfairly leverage the CPU, and any lower would result in nearly identical frame rates as I've already proven with the Haswell lineup right here. Simply put, if you're interested in only 4K gaming, I recommend an i7, period. 1080p gaming, i5, period. But there are several other smaller variables to consider, especially in the 1440p resolution. So along with the benchmarks you're about to see, I've also included peak CPU usages for each game, so you can get an idea of which are predominantly CPU intensive. I tested 8 games in total, 4 of which were run in DirectX 12 mode. Alright, I think I've covered everything, so let's see how the i5 compares to the i7. The results might surprise you just, just a little bit. First up, GTA 5, one I like to use, a solid blend of both CPU and GPU intensive segments. But the differences between the two processors in this scenario, even with everything maxed out on the regular graphics tab, including MSAA to times 8 were barely discernible. The i5 did have a bit of trouble towards the end, hence the dips here and here, but overall, real-world performance is indistinguishable. Now, let's move on to a first-person shooter. In the case of Black Ops 3, again, not much of a difference. In fact, it was the i5 that pulled ahead slightly in both minimums and averages but one frame is within the margin of error, and it wouldn't really make sense for an i5 to do better than an i7. So uh, for a game like this, an i5 is clearly your best bet. CSGO, believe it or not, showed very similar tendencies. The i5 actually pulled much further ahead of the i7, which really doesn't make sense in its own right, and being that we can't just like test both of these identically, this leads me to assume that CSGO could care less really whether your quad-core CPU has hyper-threading on board or not. But what about super CPU intensive games like City Skylines? We should notice a difference here, right? Well, yeah, actually we do. There is a difference here, about 6 frames on average. However, something to definitely consider in a case like this is price. Is i7 performance in a game like this worth an extra 6 frames? No, not when we're talking about a 100 US dollar delta. So now let's move into DirectX 12 territory. We've all been told once or twice that DirectX 12 leverages multiple CPU lanes more efficiently than the DirectX 11, meaning in theory the i7 should have an edge. But with the rise of the Tomb Raider, that is definitely not the case, at least to any noticeable degree. We're hovering around the margin of error across the board, so not looking too great for the i7 at this point. But alas, there is still hope, and I will admit all three games you're about to see did in fact benefit from the added threads. Q Total War Warhammer. Not only does this game support DirectX 12, albeit in beta, but it's also very CPU dependent, and it shows. The i7 picked up 8 additional frames on average, 15 when it came to maxes, and even 3 on the minimum side. I would regard these as statistically significant. Expect to see even wider margins with things like anti-aliasing pushed up even further than what it was already at on the Ultra preset. Hitman tells a similar story. We see a 9 frame boost on average, a difference you could arguably see on screen. Lastly, Ashes of the Singularity solidifies the fact that yes, in a few cases, the i7 is a clearly better gaming performer. Especially at lower frame rates like these, 5 FPS can make a huge difference, but is it substantial enough to justify the much higher price tag? So here's the part I didn't tell you, and this might actually help you make up your mind between the two. While I was benchmarking all of these games with both processors, I was also streaming Pandora music in the background, watching YouTube videos on Science Studios page, and also recording every single benchmarking scenario with Shadowplay. I was trying 
so hard to help out the i7 here, trying to make a case even if it meant the most dire situation. But still, the i5-6600K trucked along and hesitated only under the most rigorous of tasks. Even when CPU usage was pegged above 90%, which was under most cases by the way, during some of these benchmarks, frame rates did not dip, gameplay remained smooth, and the overall computing experiences during both overload sessions were literally indistinguishable. So even if you plan on streaming live to Twitch or recording yourself with a webcam while gaming, chances are the i5 will pack more than enough punch for what you plan to do. So long, of course, as you're willing to compromise on a few frames here and there. If you've got a beefy graphics card to back it up, CPU choice should be rather straightforward for heavy gamers. i5-6600K. Save the i7 for busy content creators and 3D modelers. All you need are four powerful cores, that's it, a solid GPU, and a decent cooling system. Save yourself a hundred or so bucks, or I don't know, buy something like a keyboard, something you'll actually benefit from. If you liked what you saw in this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down. If you feel the complete opposite, or if you hate everything about life, be sure to click subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more Science Studio Studio stuff here on Science Studio. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us. That was awesome.